Tissaphanes was a Persian soldier and statesman. He was the grandson of Hydans. Etymology. Chitrafana, shining fortune. Ci theta ra is from the Proto-Indo-European adjective coedrus, bright, fana is equivalent to avastan ex verena, fortune, family and early life. Tissaphanes was born in 445 BC. He belonged to an important Persian family. He was the grandson of Hydans, an eminent Persian general, who was the commander of the immortals during the time of King Xerxes' invasion of Greece. In 413 BC, Tissaphanes suppressed the rebellion of Pisudnus and had him arrested. As a reward, Tissaphanes was appointed as satrap of Lydia and Caria, and commander-in-chief of the Persian army in Asia Minor. When Darius II ordered the collection of outstanding tribute from the Greek cities, he entered into an alliance with Sparta against Athens, which in 412 BC led to the conquest of the greater part of Ionia. But Tissaphanes was unwilling to take action and tried to achieve his aim by astute and often perfidious negotiations. Alcibiades persuaded him that Persia's best policy was to keep the balance between Athens and Sparta, and rivalry with his neighbor Pharnabazush of Hellespontic Phrygia still further lessened his willingness to act against the Greeks. When, therefore, in 408 BC the king decided to actively support Sparta, Tissaphanes was removed as a general and his responsibilities were limited to the satrapy of Caria, with Lydia and the conducts of the war being entrusted to Cyrus the Younger. Civil War On the death of Darius II in 4004 BC, Artaxerxes II was crowned king of Persia. Tissaphanes, who found out about Cyrus the Younger's plan to assassinate his brother, informed the king about the conspiracy who then had Cyrus imprisoned, but by the intercession of his mother Parasatus, Cyrus was pardoned and sent back to his satrapy. According to Plutarch, his resentment for his arrest made him more eagerly desirous of the kingdom than before, with the desire for revenge. Cyrus gathered a large army and pretended to prepare an expedition against the Pisidians, a tribe based in the Taurus Mountains. In the spring of 401 BC, Cyrus united all his forces into an army, which now included Xenophon's 10,000, and advanced from Sardis without announcing the object of his expedition. By dexterous management and promises of large rewards, he overcame the misgivings of the Greek troops over the length and danger of the war. A Spartan fleet of 35 triremes sent to Cilicia opened the passes of the Amanus into Syria and a Spartan detachment of 700 men under Sherisophis was conveyed to Cyrus. However, Tissaphanes managed to warn Artaxerxes II and quickly gathered together an army. Cyrus advanced into Babylonia before he met with any opposition. In October 401 BC, the Battle of Cunaxa ensued. Cyrus had 10,400 Greek hoplites, 2,500 peltasts and an Asiatic army of approximately 10,000 under the command of Arius. Cyrus saw that the outcome depended on the fate of the king. He therefore wanted Clearchus of Sparta, the commander of the Greeks, to take the center against Artaxerxes. Clearchus, out of arrogance, disobeyed. As a result, the left wing of the Persians under Tissaphanes was free to engage the rest of Cyrus' forces. Cyrus in the center threw himself upon Artaxerxes but was slain. Tissaphanes claimed to have killed the rebel himself. The Greek soldiers of Cyrus, once they heard about the news of his death, realized that they were in the middle of a massive empire with no provisions, no one to finance them, and no reliable allies amongst the Persian nobles. They offered to make their Persian ally Arius king, but he refused on the grounds that he was not of royal blood and so would not find enough support among the Persians to succeed. They then offered their services to Tissaphanes, but he refused. However, the Greeks refused to surrender to him. Tissaphanes was left with a problem. He faced a large army of heavy troops that he could not defeat by frontal assault. 
he supplied them with food and, after a long wait, led them northwards for home, meanwhile detaching Arius and his light troops from the Greeks. The senior Greek officers foolishly accepted an invitation from Tisiphonus to attend a feast. There they were made prisoners, taken before the king, and decapitated, as a reward for his loyalty. Artaxerxes gave Tisiphonus one of his own daughters in marriage and restored him as governor of Lydia and as the commander-in-chief of the Persian army in Asia Minor. Later Life and Death After returning to Asia Minor, Tisiphonus attacked the Greek cities to punish them for their allegiance to Cyrus. This led to a war with Sparta in 399 BC. Tisiphonus, who once again tried to rely on subtle diplomacy, was beaten by Ages Alors II on the Pactolus near Sardis in 395 BC. At last the Persian king yielded to the representations of Fun Abazush. Strongly supported by the Chiliac Tithros and by the queen mother Parasatus, who hated Tisiphonus as the principal cause of the death of her favorite son Cyrus. Tithrostis was sent to execute Tisiphonus, who was lured to Arius a residence in Colossae and slain in 395 BC. Legacy Encyclopedia Aranica comments that